Is it good? So, <clears throat> Dan Mills, yep. you're with the Tinker Kitchen Gang. Correct. And you are working to start a kind of a kitchen makerspace in the yeah, Bay Area. Right. Yeah, we're looking to start a um, makerspace dedicated to cooking um, for people who like to hack with food. So we love hacker culture and we also love food and we decided to combine the two and make a makerspace for food. And what would a makerspace for food look like? So it looks like a mixture of a, a kitchen with a hangout space. So people can come and there's a community of people who can come together and uh, also a kitchen where we can try new things and where we can observe what other people are trying. So it's, it's as much about the cooking as about the connecting with other people about what is being cooked and learning about the science of, of the food. Uh, what would be the kind of practices or things you do in the Tinker Kitchen? So in the last few years, there have been a lot of developments in the culinary world, and it's really exciting actually to be a chef today um, because there's been all this development in the, on the science end. Um, we understand a lot more about our food and, and how to manipulate it to make awesome things. And I guess um, this ties into the sort of modernist cuisine. Yeah, yeah. So we, we don't only like modernist cuisine. We also like, you know, farm to table and all these other movements. Um, but modernist cuisine definitely plays a role. Um, we will have very cool equipment um, that most people can't have at home, like combi ovens, for example, or um, I mean, some, some people have sous vide machines. Those are now commonplace. Um, but uh, for example, liquid nitrogen, I'm pointing at it as, as if you're, people can yeah, see yeah, it, but yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have liquid nitrogen, pasta extruders, chocolate making. We can do bean, uh, bean to bar chocolate, for example. Um, so just a whole variety of things that, that most people don't have access to today. So just to give some examples, what do we see on the table here in front of us? You have uh, popcorn that's going down into, uh, yeah, into yeah. what? Yeah, so popcorn is going into liquid nitrogen, actually. And what's going to happen is that when my friend Justin here eats it, um, <laughs> he's he's going to have uh, smoke coming out of his nose. <laughs> it's actually not smoke. It's because of the liquid nitrogen. It freezes the air. But um, it looks really cool. So this is just for fun. This is what we're doing at the end of the day. But we also have um, raspberry that we have crushed into its individual segments. And we also have a pasta extruder, a professional pasta extruder. So what would you do with a pasta extruder, for example? So you can extrude like regular pasta, but then um, because you have you know, the whole process here, you can actually experiment with flavors. So you can say substitute the water in the pasta for some other liquid or you know, add in say tomato paste or you know, the sky's the limit, let your imagination fly. So what would be sort of the future of maker culture meet, meets food in two or three or four years from your perspective? Yeah, so I really hope that this takes off and that we're able to bring the fun and science of cooking out to more people to build a, a bigger community, um, both both in our space and online and in other spaces. So, yeah. so where can uh, we find you if we want to like nerd out and take a peek at what goes on in the Bay Area and we're not from here? So uh, our site is tinkerkitchen.org, um, and uh, people are always you know welcome to contact us through the site, and uh, we'd love to connect with makers around the world who are doing interesting cooking things. Thanks for talking to you, Dan. It's been a pleasure seeing all the craziness and fun with food. Thank you very much. My pleasure.